Hello everyone, this is Genius Yoshi, and today we are building Triton, the Champion of Atlantica, off of a request from one of you uh, faithful watchers or subscribers, or ideally both. If you aren't, well, you're clearly a watcher, so go hit that subscribe button. So, Triton. Opposing characters get minus one power for each location you have in play. Card has solid stats, costs way too much, but it's has a shift of six so we're going to try and shift it so what do we need well we need a shift target we need locations and we need to pay off for the minus one power to all of the opposing characters and ideally we need a lot of ink to be able to play triton and to get all these things on battlefield we need a lot of cards so we need a lot of things to go right but we're trying this for fun right so let's get to it and see what we can do with Triton. First thing we're going to look at is a shifting target. So let's look for other Tritons. Morph would be the cheapest target available to us, but I've decided to go Ruby for a couple of different reasons that will become clearer as we build the deck list. Now, 7 drop Triton, it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a shifting target, not a large vanilla character that does nothing. I am interested in the Triton Young Prince as a 3-4 that cares about location. So whenever a location is banished, we get to put the location into our ink pool. So now we have two Tritons that go well together and play well with locations. I'm happy with that. But I really need a second shifting target. So you're going to be playing four copies of the Discerning King, a vanilla 3-3 essentially. That's an inkable. Uh, it's very cringy, but again, I need a second shift target, so I'm going to be playing four copies of it. Maybe I could thin it down, but this is a Triton deck, so we're going all in. So we have 12 Tritons now, and Tritons care about location. So let's take a look at the locations that are available. So what I'm looking for are high willpower locations that are going to stick around so that when Triton hits the battlefield, the opponent character gets like minus two, minus three, and they're powerless in the face of our King of Atlantica. So we have a bunch of cheap locations out here which are not really what I'm looking for. McDuck Manor, <clears throat> I'm quite happy to play. This is a solid card on its own. The 9 willpower makes it out of reach of even Maui and the 2 pips of lore every turn just stack up pretty fast. Similarly, we're going to be playing some winter camps. It gives you a pip of lore every turn, slightly cheaper, and survives a Maui. Also, we can use it to heal our character, if that ever happens. Gonna steer clear of the uninkable RLS legacy. I'm already playing one inkable I don't really want to play, so I'm not going to try my luck with two and then well I think I want to play some Motonoe's as the last location it doesn't have that much willpower but it's cheap so maybe you can squeak it in one pip of lore and it helps with our ramping so if we have a character that's at Motonoe that gets banished in combat we get to put that character in our ink pool so maybe maybe we can make that pay off work that gives us three locations, three Brightons, and we're ready to go, at least on that front. So we're playing with those locations. We kind of need to be a bit more efficient, and there's reason number one to play a Ruby. Mr. Jim Hawking, Space Traveler. When we play it, we can play a location for free. So that's one way to cheat out one of these fancy locations, especially the Megduck Manor or a Winter Camp. Uh, can be quite useful off of gym. Okay, so now we have pretty well-rounded locations package. What I'm looking for now is some payoffs. <clears throat> and what's a good payoff for reducing the opponent's power? Well, I'm sure you've played against it recently. It's Sisu, the empowered sibling. 5-4, shift 6, so again, very expensive. But if we get to land it, we can banish all the opposing characters with weak power. And with Triton on battlefield, we can weaken the power of all of our opponent's character. So Sisu and Triton go in and rule the sea. I mean, is that an ice dragon or water dragon? For the purpose of this video, let's assume it's a water dragon. Although, yeah, looks like a water dragon to me. 
Fits well. Does Triton control Sisu or does Sisu control Triton? Which one is the most powerful? Let me know in the comments below as I have no idea what Sisu actually does in the movie. But maybe there's a clear cut winner. Then again, Triton has a trident. Uh, yeah, so let me know. Since we're going to be playing some Sisus, we might as well play the Daring Visitor. Let's play three copies of this one. It's a nice shifting target for the big Sisu and another payoff for weakening the power of our opponent's characters. Then we're going to be playing four copies of the Emboldened Warrior. Simply because it's another shifting target and it's a good card. Sinkable. So we're playing Sisu Tritons. And yeah. Let's take a look back at our list. No, that's not our list. That's the set list. Back to our deck. What are we missing that could be useful? Well, <coughs> we have our payoffs, we have our locations, we have our tritons, so we have our core three pieces. What we need is some ink and some cards. Well, one of the best way to get cards is through Mr. Hiram Flaversham. In particular, if we go just card draw, our options are fairly limited. Queen of Hearts can be good. And yeah, a bunch of cantrips. Robin, but our options are really Queen of Hearts, Hiram Flaversham, or play one of these things that care about combat, like a Sumerian Talisman or Medallion Weights, which we now need to worry about combat. Ah. Let's just keep it simple and go with the uh, well love and trusted strategy of playing Hiram Flaversham with some popsicles. Tasty little things. And another advantage of this is since we're playing the Sisu package, we're playing Hiram Flaversham, this is a perfect opportunity to play a pair of ice blocks. It allows us to weaken the opponent's in character so Sisus can do their thing, and Hiram Flaversham can eat the ice block. Doesn't taste as good as a popsicle, but hey, uh, Toy Maker likes his frozen treats. Which brings us to I'd still like another cheap item if I could. Um, still searching on ice. I think we're all out of frozen treats. So these are kind of our options for items. I don't want to go too high. I mean, Fishborn Quill and Great Stone Dragons are nice go-tos for this deck. But I think I'm going to go after the Imperial Proclamation to try and cheat out a little bit of uh, <clears throat> ink early on or reduce the cost of my characters. Also, it's inkable, it's cheap, and we need a nice turn one. Speaking of which, we need a turn two. Um, yeah, so now we have a bit of card draw bit of value from Jim. It's not as much card draw as I'd like, but then again, we've looked and there's just not that much card draw outside of Flaversham. So this is what we're going to be playing for this deck in terms of card draw. So let's see, we need two drops. We need some ramp. So the, the, the choice is obvious in my mind. One of my all time go-tos and favorite, Gromitala Storyteller. Brings us to 54. I'd like to bolster my two drops a little bit more. And one card that's been seeing a bit more play lately is this Flynn Rider, friend of me. <clears throat> if you have a strong character in play, uh, each opposing character gain, well, you gain three lore in your turn. So this card is very good with Sisu, uh, the, the big Sisu. And well, our Triton's pretty big too, and maybe we can leverage John Hawking's fort. So, what else do we need? Well, we have about as much card draw as we can hope for, which isn't enough, but it's going to be all right. We'll make you with, with that. We have the Sisu payoff, we have a location, our two drops now look fine, up to four, our, that's our five and up. So we can use another five and up, and honestly, I'd like a bit more removal. So we're going to go with Maui. And we need three copies to complete our deck list. So Maui synergizes with 
Flynn gives us removal, a high cost of inkable. I think it rounds up the list nicely. And maybe I'm trying to do too much with Triton, but let's really try to use his ability and try to get a Triton and then Sisu and just blow out our opponent. And a wonderful display of the Water Dragon summoned by Triton, or whichever way. Uh, maybe it's just a friendly alliance between Triton and Sisu who are taking down the forces of evil of uh, name the deck you hate the most. Probably Steel Emerald at this time. Bucky, destroying squirrels. That's probably what we want to do. Well, all that remains is to watch a deck in action with some games in action coming right now. We're playing against Steel Amethyst with the champion of Atlantica. As we open up a Jim Sisu Popsicle. Winner's Camp, second Sisu, second Popsicle. Well, we don't need the Sisus this early on. Back to the deck you go. As we find a much cheaper, more useful Sisu. Actually, a pair of Sisus. All right, so we have the Popsicle for the Flaversham. We have turned three play with Sisu and Jim into Winter's Camp. And there, play becomes obvious with a popsicle turn one, eating a Hiram Flaversham. Since we have a backup copy, opponent lands a small Cinderella. Training that night. Don't really need that Imperial Proclamation. As we land another copy of the Icy Treat. Find another copy of the Treat Eater. Fortunately, we're sitting again with no turn to play. I'm just not sure what to play turn two in these decks. I like Gramatala. Flynn's just okay. We don't need a pair of gems. And our Sisu doesn't have a nice target, so we're going to play the bigger sister Sisu. Also, let me know in the comments below, what would you play as a two drop in this deck? Ooh, Tinkerbell. Shifting and hurting. That's what she does. Whole new world, maybe? That would be problematic. Ouch. Well, goodbye, Flaversham plan. And now our Sisu is pretty strong. So downside of that Tinkerbell, she's just given us the tackle on the silver platter. What's our follow-up? Don't really want the pair of Motonoi, so I can ink one. Definitely taking out the Tinkerbell. Which leaves the play for the turn is either Gramatala and Motonoi, which I think is what I want to play. Just be a bit more ink -eff efficient here. Might as well get a refresher of what Motonoi does. Whenever a character is banished while there, you may put the card in the inkwell, phase down and exerted, which Gramatala does by herself, so not the most useful of location, but it might take a beating from Cinderella this turn. Oh, Cinderella decides to sing. All right. Works for me. Now on five, again, we're a little ink awkward.
don't really need that gym anymore. I think we go for Mr. Triton. I guess you can move to Motonui. Got nothing else going on. And Gramadala and Tala will go into the ink and then go into the ink. The one character that doesn't benefit from Motonui. Okay, there's about two or three more, but still. Whole new world again. It's preventing me from planning. Well, in the meantime, let's highlight what Mr. Triton does. <coughs> we can eat a popsicle to gain three lore. Fortunately, we didn't find another big Triton. Sisu comes in, is going to eat our Triton, give us some cards. Not exactly the ones we were looking for. So let me pick up a Flynn Rider. All right. So we have a ton of cards. Don't overly care about dropping a Flavorchamp here. I would like to play a Sisu. Which limits my options to Sisu Triton. I have a ton of this guy, so I can ink one pretty safely. I go Triton Sisu. Dramatala can keep on questing away. Every point of lore matters. At least what, that's what they say. 3, 6, 7, 30 to 30 cards in the deck. Calls me. How many tritons are we down? Two. Two big ones. Interesting. It's a mega song. Oh, opponent's playing mill. Whole new world again. All right. So what our opponent just played was Second start to the right, choosing us to draw five cards. Then another whole new world, we draw yet another seven. Okay, and this time we have a big triton. So we can shift. Let's shift six. We can also let Sisu take out Cinderella. Oh, would we have access to a nice block. We can challenge Cinderella and let Sisu live. So we shift Triton. Come on, big Triton. All our opposing character get minus one power. Play a little ice block. Boom, you get minus two, and we hit you for seven minus your two resist. Cinderella goes down. I guess Triton can go and fight Isma. Well, let's heal our Sisu. And Triton's. Let's heal our Triton. It's probably going to get his mud. That's all right. I just want to make sure that the opponent's not playing a Zeus lightning on it. And then along came Zeus. See, we got to play Triton. Nice use for it. The minus one attack came into play. Honestly, a fairly con convoluted way of achieving that ability. But hey, we got our Sisu to live, <coughs> thanks to Triton's ability, because of our Motonui. You don't get to say that every day. 
phone goes for a pair of characters, Robin Hood and the Fairy Godmother. And now we get to do something really fun. We get to flood the board with locations. And completely weaken our opponent's characters. McDuck Manor, Motunui, Motunui. And all your characters are now zero powered. Let's actually take that Robin to minus one, which is still zero. Because math does not apply. I don't just quest with everyone. <laughs> Enjoy your zero powered characters, dear opponent. All we're missing now is the giant Sisu to just nuke our opponent's board. And the beauty of it is the opponent just can't challenge our our, our locations. Because their characters don't do anything. Please don't remove Triton. Kind of the linchpin in this situation. Second start to the right. Who draws five? Opponent decides to pick up five cards. Ah, uh, and the opponent doesn't let us close the game. But in the face of only having zero powered characters, the opponent concedes. We're playing against a Ruby Amethyst deck using the Champion of Atlantica. Trying to intimidate our opponent because I'm expecting a pretty hard matchup here. Or in general. What do we have? We have Imperial Proclamation, Motenoi, Small Triton, Small CC. Probably can't keep both. <coughs> With Jim Hawkins. I think we keep the Triton, send the uninkable Sisus. Keep the rest. All right, opponent, what have you got? As we pick up a second Matanui and a Flynn Rider. Frenemy. Uh, feels like he's gonna backstab someone. Start of your turn, if you have the character with the most power, you gain tree lore. Let the battle of the powerful begin. Oh, I certainly do not need a pair of Motonoes, so I'll ink one. Do we want to play the Imperial Proclamation? Probably. It's potential ramp. Opponent quests and sacks the Chernabog's follower. A cantrip that gives you one lore on turn one. And then you can bounce back with Mim. Ooh, and we find Master Triton. Holding the small Triton, that gives us a nice turn to Matanui. As tempting as it is to just resolve Flynn. Maybe we'll keep Flynn for a later turn. Let's anchor Sisu. And land Montanui. Passing turn back. Montanui. One of our characters banished here, we can put it into our ink pile. As the opponent lands a big Sisu. I think we want to play our Triton here. What do we send away? Oh, that Flynn Rider is not looking as good anymore. So let's send him out. Play Triton. Looks like our Montanui is going to bite the dust. Ouch. Well, that was an ineffective location. At least we have each right. Let's see what this one does. 
we have the tree drop triton you can banish an item to gain three lore which is not really what we're looking for at this point find another uninkable character it's too bad i really want to ink it and we're still ways off from being able to to land our big tritons so we're gonna have to ink Gramatala and land triton number two to the battlefield fortunately i don't like the matchup between our king tritons and the sisus These who just have too much combat power for what we're going for here. Not that scary, Sisu. This one. Point goes for a little bunny. Hopping around, gathering some cards. This brawl goes to the bin. One starting the quest with the Sisus. Ah, we really needed an inkable here. Really needed it. Because we could gym into manor. Get two cards out. I mean we can't really ink our tri our King Triton, can we? Let's shift six too. Well, do we want Jim or do we want the McDuck Manor? We're gonna ink Jim. See who's dropped the four power. Gotta play Triton number three. Sisu's draft is still just a bit too much power. It's hard to get these characters to, to be very low on power. If this was a Triton slot machine, we'd be in a good spot. Fortunately, it is not. So we're just sitting with a 3 of tree trees with no reasonable ability. Things are kind of sketchy. Be king undisputed each... Okay, we banish one of our characters. Wonder what I'll choose. That's a song. Be King Undisputed. It's pretty good. Madame Medusa gets rid of another Triton. Only have one left. And you find the McDuck Manor. You can challenge the bunny with Triton. Then we get in a very odd spot. Or we can shift King Triton, but we don't have a location in plan. If we put a location, the Sisus are going to eat it up. Or we ink a McDuck Manor, land King Triton. Just hard shift. These things are two questers. Shift six. Land a big card. Sisus are two powered, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Opponent can take out Triton. But if we leave our opponent questing, we're in trouble. So I think we have to take out a Sisu here. But we have landed. King Triton as a essentially a vanilla 793 quester at this point because we don't have a location in play. Fortunately, the opponent can take it out. That's probably a bit more likely that the opponent is just going to quest away. The opponent goes to remove it. Look at that, we've invested a lot in our King Triton. And we are out of cards after that. Our opponent is sitting pretty with four cards in hand and a rabbit on the battlefield. Winifred. 
and we've got nothing to combat the Flynn except a pair of locations which aren't going to cut it because Flynn goes four lore per turn and a big CC well big <laughs> the one four one's going after our locations all right let's pick up a card off of popsicle it's flynn we can move flynn to our location that's about to get demolished opponent takes out Matanui. Uh, that's kind of the downside of this type of strategy. It's very hard to land Triton and have locations in play. It's just so so costly inkwise. Can land a Sisu. Take out our opponent's Sisu. Revenge! And that's pretty much all we'll be able to do. We can trade Flynn's, but we don't want that because then that Flynn becomes king. Can move our characters to the Megduck Manor for no apparent reason and pass the turn back. One's well, gonna take out take down the manor with Flynn's. I mean, they look like thieves. They'll destroy Scrooge's riches. That's another Madame Medusa, Revels, and the awesomeness of her golden telephone built from melted Scrooge money. Winter's Camp. What does that do? Questioning my own card choices. Whenever a character quests while there, you can heal. Hooray, I can, <laughs> I can heal my undamaged 1-1. One -one. Yeah, from them. All right. Pause the turn. Let the opponent quest the victory. Actually, just the Flynn triggers are going to end the game. As we didn't manage to land a Triton, but we couldn't get locations on top and enough pressure on the board, our game plan basically fell apart. We're playing a color mirror match. Sapphire Ruby against Sapphire Ruby. Going first, the fine the Hiram Flaversham. A cool looking Triton, Flynn Rider, Gramatal, Ice Block Maui, and a McDuck Manor. Seems pretty good, actually. So I'll keep it as is. Turn one Ice Block, turn two Tala or Flynn, depending on level of pressure we want to, to apply. And then we can land our Triton fairly quickly. Although I guess I'm going to aim that Flynn. <laughs> I have to make that decision now because I know I want to land turn one eyes block. Ice block, just giving minus one power to a character. Opponent thinks they know what we're playing. Little, little do they know that they know nothing. Imperial Proclamation, we are going to ink. And land the Gramatala. Classic, yet effective. We don't have a, sacrifice, a sacrificial target, so we're going to get a little bit of lore out of the grandma. But lore is never a bad thing. Apparently it helps you to win games. Now with the flapper sham in hand, I'm not sure whether I should have thrown away that uh, those firecrackers. Opponent goes Gramatala themselves. So I think here we have to ink the Maui. 
Let's see John, the uninkable Triton. Go to quest, pass the turn. Give the opportunity to trade Gramatalis. As we now have Triton, eater of items. But don't touch these items, they belong to Flavrishan. Really using this Triton as a shifting target, mostly. It's costing us a lot. The lack of inkability is a big problem on the Triton. Especially since it's not that great. Could be a finisher. Maybe. Opponent goes Big Sisu as a 4 4, thanks to the amount of cards we have in hand. Don't overly care for that Flynn Rider. So off to the ink. And Sisu has such high power that it's not a good time to land a location against her. We can take out the Gramatella with our Triton, land Flavrisham. Eat the, eat the ice block, pick up some cards, or just land Triton, setting us up for Megduck Manor. Let's go for that. Let's give our opponent the ink. Try to establish board, board presence. As we land Triton. I'll pass the turn back. This Triton, I'm a lot happier to play. Can also challenge evasive characters, which is a nice plus. Find it funny how the bad Triton is rare and the uncommon Titan Triton is much better. Dreamboard Prince, who becomes a king. But the King Triton is the one we haven't drawn yet. As the opponent keeps on playing flavorful frozen treats. Let's see what will come out. Four ink available, Flavor Sham is the play of choice. Opponent is going for the card advantage war. See if we can take out Triton. Decides to quest, which is an odd choice here. Um, so I can Ice Cube the Sisu, land the Megduck Manor. So I, normally I'd want to land the Flavorsham, eat the Ice Block, but that makes Sisu pretty big. If I use the Ice Block and play the Megduck Manor, then Sisu becomes two powered and I can take it out with Triton and Gramatala. Yeah, let's go for that. Make that commander. Reduce the power of the CCU. Can even bring it down further by inking my own CCU. Maybe you go for that. I can just take it out with both Tritons, taking one point of damage along the way on each of them. I get a free quest in with Gramatala. I don't need the extra piece of ink. And Triton will surf into the McDuck Manor. McDuck Manor. Plain, simple, effective. Just location, it gives you lore every turn. Flavrisham's not in a great position to fight it. Now, both our Tritons are weak to Meta Medusa, which is due to come out any turn now. 
then we'll see. Fund has seven options available and we have not much, but we control the board. So at least that's there's something going for us. And we have Flaversham who's gonna transform this meager board into a lot of cards in hand pretty soon. Perhaps Maui could come in. No, even Maui and Flaversham aren't enough to take down our manor. One's really thinking about this one. Inks to six, and there comes the Madame Medusa. Taking out our good Triton, as she should. <coughs> Flaversham goes to quest, eats a popsicle, We find Jim Hawking. Not quite what we're looking for. We'll land our own Flaversham and see what we can pick up. Off of that ice cube, we find a Sisu and a Maui. Granatala is going to quest. Do I want to free damage on Flaversham? Probably. I can't really land anything else. So let's ink that Sisu. That Sisu was so so, anyways. And send a couple of folks to the McDuck Manor. Again, just. It's nice living space. Maybe it's going to motivate our characters to increase their stats or ability to survive or just make our opponent giggle Maui comes in and there goes our manor that'll do it Medusa Maui Destroyer of Manor. I mean, it's pretty big. Looks like an estate. Not just the mansion, but the gardens. You can't just go in and destroy it. You, you need a lawnmower, some, someone to trim the edges, and wreck it, Ralph. That, that would probably do it. Opponent is outcarding us severely. Decided to sacrifice Flaversham into the Triton? Not sure why. Oh well, now I'll take out Madame Mim, Medusa. Too used to seeing Madame Mims. And we'll take three points of lore. Maui. Rush. Reckless. Hero to all. Enemy to everyone who plays against it. But a pretty powerful card since, since its inception. On nukes the board. You have to be prepared for that. We get Gramatala to the ink, but cards are 6-2. Odds of winning are, well, about 62 the other way. No, the same way. Whoever has the most card is more likely to win. At about a 75%. Find a popsicle. Let's see what we find off of it. Sisu. All right. So, okay. We'll land a Flynn Rider. And looking at that Flynn Rider's gaze... Oh, wait, that's Jim Hawking. Sorry. Kind of look similar. So I land a Jim Hawking who's looking out in space towards the future with an intimidating glare. Hopefully that'll be enough to win the game. I'm not counting on it. But at this point, I'm going to take hope. And space traveling. Let's see what our opponent has to say about that. 
4 4, we dodged the Madame Medusa's. Opponent lands an evasive mini Sisu and a bell. All right. That is, these are both prime targets for our Mega Sisu of Doom. And now the opponent's suddenly starting to be much lower on cards. Ah, but we just had to pick up an uninkable card. So we're going to play our Ice Block. And Ice Block's going to allow us to take out Bell off of Sisu. Thanks to her ability to simply take out characters with one power or less. And Jim gets the quest. Let's see what you have to say about that opponent. So we're still sitting pretty with our board wiping Sisu. The empowered sibling. Banish all characters that cost two or less. Only opposing characters at that. So Triton's not doing that great a job. So it's up to Jim and the Sisu siblings to take out our opponent on their own. What may be a bit of a nice block to cool their drinks, you know. Vitalisphere. You have to be careful about a, a be prepared here. Opponent can't quest with Sisu, and neither can we, because then the ice block is going to make the other Sisu useless, and we get a free combat. Then again, we're at 11, so maybe we'll we'll push it. Just we have nice big Sisu that can come in, just like that. One plays the big Sisu, quest with the small one. As we find an evasive Sisu. All right, let's play the Sisu War. My Sisu takes down your Sisu. That took down my Sisu. But we will see soon what's going to happen. Sorry, I just had to say that one. Uh. How far I'll go. Pretty strong card. Draw one, ink one. Mickey Mouse the song. Mickey Mouse Detective the song. Two cards against our empowered sibling in hand. Oh yeah, you can do that. Let us block and fight. Another bell comes in. We find a Maui. We can aim the Maui to take out the bell. Or we can hold the Maui and fight the bell next turn. We can use both of our items. And go Maui, Popsicle, the C... Uh, Ice block the Sisu, Popsicle the Maui, quest for one. Which is quite tempting in this particular situation. Maui would be out of range of Bell and still threaten Bell. I like that. Take out Sisu. Super overkill. But we get to keep Maui out of kill range from Bell. Let me keep our evasive CC. Yes, we are nearing the 20 the 20 lore. Having a small evasive character like that could pay dividends. Or maybe it's a growth stock character. You know, made out of good cardboard stock. Ooh, scuttle. That's a nice one. Opponent misses on the scuttle. 
Brawls to take down RC2. Whenever you play this character, look at the top four cards, pick up an item. Let me find a Motonui. Well, in this case, we really want to play our CSU. Here comes the nuke. Goodbye, opposing characters. And now Maui just stares in this space because he can't quest. Ooh. Opponent finds one of the best top decks available to them. Here I'm Flavershan. up a popsicle so an endless stream of cards available to our opponent can he deal with Cecil? we've got two turns when we find a triton do you want to land it oh well, we definitely want to quest with Cecil. that's a given do i land the triton so the opponent must deal with Cecil. I'm a bit afraid of a be prepared, so I think I'm gonna hold the Triton for now. So I don't think the opponent has many ways to deal with a 5 4. A Maui would do it. Yeah, maybe I should have played the Triton. I don't know. If you were in my position, would you have dropped the Triton on the battlefield? Improve the board presence, but improve, but also increase the the amount of damage that a be prepared would do. Let me know in the comments below. Triton or hold? Flavorsham digs for some more cards. Also, this isn't the, the Triton, the game ender, which would actually be nice right now if we could find. This Triton that allows us to gain tree lore by banishing our ice block would be pretty good. Ground without opponent is digging hard. Oh yeah, the opponent needs an answer to Cecil. Two cards to find a Maui or be prepared. Develop your brain. Two cards to find a Maui or be prepared. I'm repeating myself. Opponent is seeing a lot of cards. We've seen one Maui, one be prepared. Opponent has 23 cards in their deck. We've seen a lot this turn. Uh, Flavorsham to the ink. What's your answer? Lucky Dime? Lucky Dime is not an answer. Lucky Dime is very valuable, but doesn't answer the current board state. Which means that our Tritons are going to get a win off of the Sisus mostly. But still. It's an enchanted shiny dragon. It deserves to win. And we take the win. We're playing a mirror match. Sapphire Ruby against Ruby Sapphire. As we open up with a pair of Flynn Riders, a Sisu, an Ice Block. Ice Block doesn't seem overly appealing with this hand. But turn two Flynn, turn three Sisu is kind of neat. With at least one Megduck Manor to go with Jim. Seems like a keep. We find a Gramatala. Start by inking one of our manners. We don't need two of those. We'll pass the turn back to our opponent. Do we Flynn or do we Gramatala? That's the question. On popsicles. Don't really want that Motonui. Well, let's go the aggressive route. Flynn. 
putting some pressure on the opponent to play a character with at least two power. That's the threat. I guess the turn three Sisu is going to up the ante and force the opponent to play a fairly big character or deal with a Sisu, which is the more likely scenario. One jump ahead. Pure ramp. Sacrificing four lore to our Flynn. Close the trigger. So we unfortunately find a popsicle. I'm going to ink the grandma. Lend Sisu. And now we have the powerhouse 7 4 with Flynn on the battlefield. That's some serious pressure. Tamatoa goes out of the way into the pile of ink as the opponent tries to ice block us successfully as your copy of Cease you can take down my Flynn let me pick up a Flaversham hmm this is awkward I really want to land the Triton, but to land the Triton, I need to eat the Flaversham. I think I'm still going to go that route. Might not be the right play, but we're trying to highlight some Tritons here. So let's go with that. Because Jim into McDuck Manor is pretty, pretty oppressive. Right in. Attack your evasive. So we get to challenge that Sisu if she does dare to quest. More brain freeze action for our opponent. And there's the Flaversham. Everyone's favorite toy maker. Eater of popsicles. Gainer of terrible card advantage. CC goes to quest. We find a big triton, which we we have to ink because we have the Jim Hawkins into McDuck Manor. That's kind of my fear with the deck. There's just so many cards that you need in play with the combo. Yet you need to ink some cards. And you can't do everything. So sometimes you have to end up sacrificing your combo pieces and just play good stuff. And, and it's really clear in a hand like this where you see the Triton, you're like, I want to ink the Triton to play the Flaversham. And I want to eat the Triton to play the Gym. But this is a Triton deck. <laughs> so I can't eat all the Tritons. Eyes block and brawl takes out our king of the sea. As the opponent sets up a be prepared for next turn. We had a ton of cards in hand. Sings how far I'll go. That depends. Opponent needs to be prepared, followed by a Maui. As we're starting to get a lot of lore off of our fairly aggressive start. Find another gym. Quest all the way to 14. I still think I'm going to play it. Be prepared or lose. 
then we'll go to 16 and when it gets 16 18 to 1 it becomes very hard for our opponent to sneak their way back in, back out of that because all we need to do is just drop something and that can quest then he must remove it they must remove it over and over Power of locations. When you're ahead on lore and your opponent doesn't have a large board presence, they become uh, a huge pain. There you are, Jim. Opponent needs more. Madame Medusa alone is not good enough. And that'll be game. <clears throat> the very aggressive opening into a Jim Hawking's Megduck Manor is actually pretty intimidating, I must say. Uh, so if we forget about the Triton for a minute there, but that line of play of Flynn into Sisu into a nice turn four into Jim with a Megduck banner is pretty oppressive. And I think a lot of decks would struggle against that on the draw. We're playing Ruby Sapphire against Sapphire Ruby. And we're finding Motonui, Big Triton, Sisu Flavorsham, Winter Scam, Small Triton, Flavorsham number two. Going first, send away one of the small Tritons. I'll call it a hand. So we pick up another of the high powered Sisu. Off to the ink. Do a Maleficent. So the opponent's going to be playing big ramp style deck. Probably including some flavor shen shenanigans. Second Motonui. Instant ink. For Motonoi number one. Let's get this show on the road with some lore. Using Motonoi. One has nothing. Imperial Proclamation. We'll ink one of our flavor shams for now. And let's land Slender Sisu. High powered quester. Applying some pressure. If we have to, we can ink the Winter's Camp and go Triton Proclamation next turn, sending out the Flavorsham. Opponent just doesn't care. Just ink, ink, ink. means we got to be wary of the be prepared. Ooh, that's a threat. It's an interesting threat. That's not where I want to go with this hand. Again, I kind of wish I could ink this Triton. But the lack of ink ability is disturbing. <coughs> I just need the shifting target. Here I'm Flavorsham for our opponent. Refueling their hand. As we pick up McDuck's Manor. How much to move to Montanui? One. One is next to Be Prepared Ink. 
can also play a McDuck Manor here. What are the odds of the opponent be prepared? Quest with Flaversham, Hardcast be prepared. We go to this line with Motonui. We land the Manor. I'd rather drop the Flaversham next turn, so I think I just want to make Duck Manor for now. And force our opponent's hand. Should I ink a Winter's Camp? Yeah, I'll ink a Winter's Camp. And I'll move Sisu to Motonui. Let's get some ink in exchange for that. If the opponent doesn't be prepared, then I, I like my board state. Might not be sufficient. Don't have a ton of cards in hand. As Meta Medusa comes in to take out Triton. Opponent inks a Maui. Not surprising. Maui's pretty good considering we're fairly location heavy right now. But Flaversham's got the cards. We go to 11 and find Triton. Not all. Well, Sisu's going to challenge Flaversham because we get Imperial Proclamation to trigger, meaning that Flaversham will cost 3. We can eat said Imperial Proclamation. Eat it for some cards. We can land a Winter's Camp here. More pressure in the form of locations. Like they say in real estate, locations, locations, locations. Opponent takes out Sisu. Sisu goes to the ink. Thanks to Motonui. And there comes Maui, trying to destroy his homeland. I don't know if it's his homeland. I haven't watched the movie yet. Watch parts of it. Watch some of it on Disney on Ice. Does that count? Probably not. Not enough to know the finer details. As we get to 14, picking up another Motonui. Standing to just play it. But if we ink it, we can land a big triton. Then again, what's our opponent going to play? A Maleficent Dragon? I think I'm better off with the Motonui. Flaversham to it. Quest. Just try to get these last pips of lore. And make our opponent's life as difficult as possible. Sorry, Triton. You're just too expensive. Opponent takes out Motonui. Sisu will get rid of Flaversham. And we'll go to 18. Find another Triton. And that'll be our turn. Opponent must take down the Megduck Manor, which means Winter Camp will live a turn. Are you going to lose at 19? No, opponent decides to concede. I guess their hand didn't have anything to, to counter the locations, but I think just on board the opponent had a decent shot. Oh well, we'll take the win. I hope that you've enjoyed this video featuring Triton, the champion of Atlantica. Overall, the deck performed pretty much as I expected, which is mostly terrible. In particular, this Discerning King Triton is abysmal. Um, maybe I should be playing fewer copies. I'm half tempted simply because that Triton was so bad to see what the morph variation would look like. Maybe there's more play there. 
Uh, the Sisu plus Triton, while really cool when you got to land it, is just too much high costed to get her. Um, which makes it very hard to make good use of that payoff, reducing the opponent's power for one for each location you have in play. You're already committing so much to try and play Triton that having to play locations, which are win more type cards on top of it, makes the deck bulky to play. Uh, overall, the Sisus have proven to be quite powerful. Uh, Flynn, Maui, Sisu, that, that package from Ruby into a Popsicle Ice Block style deck is actually a pretty decent uh, synergistic block that we're seeing uh, Ruby and Sapphire play more and more actually these days. So that core piece that's avoiding Tritons actually does fairly well. I'm interested to see if we find another cheap Triton that cares about locations and gives us a bit more payoff, maybe a Triton location deck will become useful in the future, but we're really lacking that second Triton that benefits from locations and locations that kind of bolster that Triton synergy. Again, I hope that you've had a great time, that you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time for some more Lorcana awesomeness.